Now with Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, House Speaker Emerita, who's out with a new book, The Art of Power. My story is America's first woman Speaker of the House. Thank you for coming in today. My pleasure. Striking, striking title, The Art of Power. How yes. is power an art? Well, let, first let me just say it's wonderful to be with you on this morning where we celebrate and congratulate the President for the great return of the prisoners. Uh, it mm. was a virtuoso diplomatic performance at once again on his part following up on his uh, success with NATO and 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 the rest so I'm very happy and congratulations to our American athletes at, at mm -hmm. the Olympics aren't they don't they make us so proud and great. happy yeah the art of power yeah it is um, I could have made it the science of power <laughs> but it really is more of an art in my view and it is about um, the ephemeral the what people are thinking, respect for them. It's it's about, it's about uh, again acknowledging, consensus building, and the rest of that. It's your, not about power coming down. It's about bubbling up. Your your book is also in many ways a plea for political civility and decency. You open, of course, with the attack on your husband from a couple of years ago, the harrowing events of January 6. It does seem like we've gone off the rails in many ways. Well, it's, it has no place in our society. I mean, we are a democracy. We have differences of opinion. And politics is, is a, a place where you have nonviolent uh, differences of opinion. And this has uh, gotten to a place that we have to back off of. And it, it is, um, I think, what the public would want. As, as, as Kamala has said, we're better than this. We deserve better than this. And uh, we just have to make a decision. We have to make a decision to be the country that we are, honoring the vision of our founders for this great country, the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform to protect our freedom, our freedom, and again, the aspirations of our children to be safe. And, and uh, we have all of that, and I believe in the goodness of the American people. I believe that's what they do want. So we just have to back off uh, what is out there. And what was sad about my husband's situation is he's not very political. They were after me. And I feel guilty about his paying the price. But in addition to that, in addition to that, all families, we don't want families to feel at risk because they're someone in their family is engaged in public service. It has been a dizzying summer uh, in, in politics. You know, we saw yeah. the withdrawal of President Biden, an historic decision by him. Uh, a lot has been written and said about your role in all yeah. of this. I know you've denied making any phone calls about this, but how would you describe your role in that whole episode? Well, I have the greatest respect for the president. I think he will be one of the most consequential Joe Biden will be one of the most viewed as one of the most consequential presidents in our country. I want him, his legacy, uh, to be recognized, preserved. It's our legacy, too, in the Congress. We work together uh, for a great legacy for our country, for a great agenda for working families and for the kitchen table issues for America's working families. So I wanted that to be um, re recognized, and he was the one who could recognize it the most. So we just wanted him to make the decision on how we best preserves that legacy and also and the only win. way to do that was for him to step down well that would be up to him to decide it was always about him and why i said i didn't make calls because people said i was burning up the airways no it wasn't the only person that i spoke to about this was the president other people called me about what their views were about it and, but I rarely even returned a call, much less well, initiated one. Was it easier or harder for you to talk to him about that, given your own decision a couple of years ago to step down as Democratic leader of the House, saying it's time for a new generation? Well, it was easier because um, it, it was easier. But I wasn't asking him to step down. I was asking for a campaign that would win. And, and I wasn't seeing that on the horizon. And that's really more... My, if we're going to win, winning an election is a decision. You make a decision to win, and you make every decision in favor of winning in terms of how you mobilize at the grassroots level and own the ground to get out the vote, how you have a message that is bold and progressive but not menacing to the public, and how you have the money to do that, to attract that, look largely from small donors. 
And then the most important decision is the candidate. If, if it's all is about winning, candidate. what is the most important, uh, what's the best decision for Kamala Harris to make right now for her running mate? Well, first, I'm, I'm excited about her candidacy, and uh, I, I think that all of the candidates for vice president are excellent, and any one of them would be great. Uh, uh, it's a difficult decision because they're all so great. It is the most important decision for her to make, not just about who can help win, but who can help serve and lead, uh, and whose confidence uh, she trusts. She has confidence in and trust, and uh, so we're all eager to hear who that may be. But it is, again, necessary for us to have, again, the candidates, the message, the, the enthusiasm, own the ground to get out that vote to win the election. You just gave us another lesson in the art of power and the way you answered that question. <laughs> thank you for coming nice in. To be with you. <laughs> the art of power is available tomorrow. Robin? Well said. Thank you both so much.